This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2553, How to Stop Being Disappointed, part two, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that reads to you every single day of the year. But today's episode is part two of a longer post. If you didn't catch part one yesterday, I'd recommend listening to that first. That's episode 2552. But if you're all caught up, then let's get right to part two and continue optimizing your life. How to Stop Being Disappointed, Part 2, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. How does prediction play out in business? Just as people can succumb to unreasonable expectations in their personal lives, they make similar mistakes in business. People enter bad business deals and make bad investments often. Then for emotional reasons, they try to convince their brains to alter these predictions. This investment is likely to lose money if I stay with it, gets wrangled into... I'm sure the stock will start trending upwards soon. Good predictions are emotionless. You may take emotional input into consideration, especially when predicting human behavior, but it's unwise to allow your predictions to become tainted by emotion. Good prediction is based on recognizable patterns, not on hope, divine intervention, or unrealistic odds. Good prediction, therefore, requires good data. If you're new to business, you won't necessarily be able to predict your long-term performance. You'll need to try out some deals first, develop some new income streams, and put your behaviors to the test. Then you'll have some data to see how your performance is shaping up. With this data and some good, emotionless predictions, you can identify and target areas for growth. A common mistake people make is looking to other people's business results to predict their own. This is like looking at someone else's punctuality to predict your own. You might pick someone who's just like you and come up with a fairly accurate prediction, but you could just as easily choose poorly. Just because other people are late doesn't predict that you'll be late. What you can learn from others, however, is which patterns are more likely to lead to success than others. Many people try to do this at the level of behavior, but other people's behaviors can be very difficult to model if you don't understand the thoughts, beliefs, and motivations that generate those behaviors. Modeling other people's thoughts and beliefs is also fairly difficult. Quite often, successful people don't even know which thoughts contributed to their success and which didn't. Many books that attempt to share these success patterns are contradictory. Some people claim to have succeeded with a strong work ethic and tremendous persistence, while others preach that success is about grace, ease, and flow. I suggest that if you want to model other success patterns, then what you really need to model is their predictive abilities. You don't need to copy their thoughts, beliefs, or behaviors. You just need to understand their predictions. If you understand how and why they make the predictions they do, then you can learn to make similar predictions and this will give you the right insights to make intelligent choices in a similar domain. For instance, if you want to model Warren Buffett at stock investing, don't try to copy his behavior and don't worry about modeling his thoughts, beliefs, and self-image. Instead, seek to understand how and why he makes the predictions he does. Why does he expect certain companies to increase in value? What factors does he use in making these predictions? Note that if you understand his predictions, then you can make similar profitable investment decisions. You may also notice that people who have excellent relationship skills are also very skilled at making predictions in their social interactions. They have a good grasp of how other people will react to various stimuli. They can predict with good accuracy when a certain behavior would be perceived as creepy, while a similar but slightly different action would be seen as sexy. If you've been following my passive income series, you can use this idea to your advantage to improve your income generating skills. Don't worry so much about making money right out of the gate. Instead, begin to think about which opportunities are more likely to produce hits than others. Consider new products that are just being released. How well do you think they'll sell? What do you think about the new Microsoft Surface tablets? Will those be hits or flops? What about the new Google Nexus? What about the iPhone 5? Which products do you expect to become hits and why? On what factors are you basing your predictions? If you're going to create an ebook for your next passive income stream, go to amazon.com, search on some topics that interest you and see what the top sellers are. See if you can determine why they became top sellers and why other books in the same genre didn't. One key factor is surely the author. Popular authors are more likely to release hits than unknown authors. But what about unknown authors that release runaway hits? What are the contributing factors there? Is it their choice of genre, writing style, marketing methods, pricing, etc.? See if you can predict which factors matter and which don't. 
Luck and randomness play a role, of course, but there are plenty of elements that can be controlled, even for first-time authors. Why not give yourself every advantage by reproducing the factors that are more likely to predict success and avoiding the factors that are more likely to result in failure? Why bother writing a book in a genre that's known for dismal sales, for instance? As you develop the ability to make more accurate predictions about what will sell well and what won't, this will give you the ability to make better decisions when creating and launching your own products. One strategy I used for growing my website traffic was to pay attention to traffic spikes and to note which articles caused those spikes. I did my best to understand why some articles generated huge traffic spikes while most articles had very little effect on traffic. With this knowledge, I was able to deliberately write more articles that I expected would boost my traffic. I used the data to improve my predictions and then I used what I learned from these predictions to make better decisions. I wasn't always right, of course, but my results still improved markedly. Being a little more accurate in your predictions can lead to being more intelligent in your decisions, and over a period of years, this can lead to enjoying significantly improved results, both personally and professionally. Overall, your brain is brilliant at making predictions. Let it do its job and do your best to accept its predictions with calmness and detachment. Base your decisions on these flexible and intelligent predictions, not on expectations that have been corrupted with excess emotional residue. You just listened to part two of the post titled How to Stop Being Disappointed by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Thank you again to Steve. I do think that if we all could make better predictions, then the world could be a better place, especially in terms of relationships. Understanding why someone will react in a certain way is incredibly valuable. And as he mentioned in this article, having this skill in business is huge. A lot of this article, to me at least, is about going deeper and really getting to the why of things. I think if we can say, oh, I see why that happened, why this person had that response, see things from an outside perspective and sort of like removing our own personal lenses of how we view the world, then that knowledge will stay with us, help us make better predictions in the future, understand more whys in the future, which then again makes us better at predicting and a sort of snowball effect of knowledge and experience can lead us down a better path with fewer misunderstandings, more patience, and more compassion, which to me sounds like a really nice place to be. So it's something to try today, maybe fewer expectations and a bit more, hopefully accurate predictions based on past experiences. And have a great rest of your day. And I'm gonna catch you in just a moment with our weekly bonus episode. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.